Welcome to the Willard House Kitchen on Maribel College campus. Today we will be showing you the techniques used to make homemade mozzarella cheese. Now, Dr. Crane's Science 150 biology students will be using these techniques in order to study the effects of pH and temperature on enzyme reactions. So the first step is to add half a gallon of Mayfield's milk to two different pots. Now, if we were making this at home, we would use a whole gallon to one pot. But today we have two different treatment groups. And now, next we're going to add half a teaspoon of citric acid to one pot and a teaspoon to the other pot. Now it's important for you guys to remember which pot you're adding half a teaspoon to and which pot you're adding a full teaspoon to. This citric acid was purchased from the New England Cheese Making Company and it's very inexpensive. Now, once it's added, you need to stir slowly and evenly, making sure both pots receive the same treatment in order to evenly spread the citric acid throughout the milk. Now we're going to turn both pots onto medium-low and heat until 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's been about 10 minutes and we've reached 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we have to obtain a sample of milk in order to determine its pH. And we'll do this with both pots once they've reached 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, once we've tested the pH of each, we're going to continue heating until it gets to 88. Now, once it reaches 88, you can add your rennet and immediately start your timer. Now, we've taken a quarter tab of rennet and we've diluted it with dechlorinated water. And essentially what this is going to do is that this is the enzyme that's going to separate the curds from the whey. And as soon as this happens, you need to start watching the pot to see what's going to happen to your milk. So now you can see that the curds have separated from the whey. Now, at this point, we're going to stop our timer. But we're going to continue heating until it reaches 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to turn off the stove. All right, so we've reached 105 degrees on the stove. We turned it off, and we've taken our pot of curds and whey over here to the sink. Now our next step is to pour this into a colander and start the straining process to remove all the way from the liquid from our curds. So we get all this out of the pot. And just start straining all of the way out. Now this might be hot, so be careful here. But as you do this, you can start to work your curds into a ball, which will make it easier to separate. So all you have to do is apply pressure, squeeze it a little bit, and the whey will be pushed out of the curd. Now, once you've got it compacted, you can take it out of here, move on over to a bowl, and start the kneading process. So here, all you're doing is just applying more pressure to the curds, and as you're doing this, you're going to start forcing out more whey. And we're going to repeat this process a few times until we have as much out of it as we can. So now what we're going to do is combine the two sets of curds. And then we're going to knead them together and take them to a microwave and microwave for a minute. Now that we've collected our data, it doesn't really matter if we combine them. The important part is over. So we've just come back from the microwave, and it's becoming very stretchy. 
and just removing any excess weight. Now this is going to be pretty hot, so be careful as you're doing this, but once we've got as much out as we can, we're going to move on over to a tray we have set up, and we're going to salt and knead it additionally. Okay, so we've just microwaved it for an additional 45 seconds, and the next step is to knead it out and start adding our salt. Now, to this point, too, if you want, you can start adding other herbs like basil or oregano to change the taste to whatever you'd like. But all we're doing is sprinkling a little bit of salt and kneading it just like we were before to get all the way out. And it's going to be hot here too, so once again, be careful. So once you've flavored it to whatever you want and you're done kneading, you can basically shape this however you want. You can roll it out into braids, you can shape it into balls, you can leave it just as one big mass, it's completely up to you. Now, once you're done, if you're not going to eat this immediately, what you can do is place it in a bag with a little bit of salt water, and you can store it in the fridge for up to two to three weeks. So here's the finished product. Like I said, you can store it for as long as you want. But for right now, Macy, would you like to try some? Sure. Cheers. Good. I think this is going to be a lot of you guys enjoy.